Awesome. So, hello, my name is Bridger Scraper. I'm actually an undergraduate student at North Dakota State University. And today I'll be presenting my research from the summer of 2021. So in my research, I aim to answer the question, does evolutionary naivety explain the anti-predator response of the Moapora River Springfish, Crinicthes bailei Moapai? Before I begin, I'd like to give a special thanks to the following people. Without their help, my research would not have been possible. So thank you. Approximately 10,000 years ago, this is what the area looked like where my species um, inhabits. So there was large bodies of water with lots of connectivity and a climate that was suitable for keeping those large bodies of water. Nowadays, it is much hotter and much drier in this area, and a lot of the water is receded. Um, there's a lot less connectivity between the water pockets, and it's created what are coined as aquatic islands. The aquatic islands have very low connectivity, and the species that live within them are subject to low predation and low competition. Organisms that evolved with limited predation may lose the ability to detect and or respond to alarm cue. This is what is um, known as evolutionary naivete. The lack of an alarm cue response makes species susceptible to new predators. New predators within these systems include invasive species such as the western mosquito fish and the red swamp crayfish. The delicate ecosystems of the island, uh, aquatic islands um, when they're a new species such as these invasive species is introduced can have really big impacts on some of these desert fishes, especially if that fish is unable to respond accordingly. Um, there's many aquatic and amphibious organisms that use chemical alarm cues. An example of this is Schreckstoff, also known as scary stuff in German. It was first coined by von Frisch in 1938 and is thought to signify anti-predator behavior in many different species. The alarm cue is um, presumed to be released by epithelial club cells. So when, when the epithelium of the fish is damaged, it releases these chemical cues into the water and other fish respond to those cues with anti-predator behavior. This animation by Wizard in 2015 shows um, the chemical alarm cue system, how it works with anti-predator behavior. So on the left, you can see a group of normally foraging fish. And on the right, you can see a fish that is about to be preyed upon by a predator. The predator takes a bite out of the preyed upon fish and the epithelium is damaged, releasing chemical alarm cues into the water. The normally foraging fish perceive the chemical alarm cues and in turn have some sort of anti-predator response. For our research, we had to find a way to quantify the data. So we used Olson et al's behavioral study. On the x-axis, we have the total activity before stimulus. And on the y-axis, we have the total activity after stimulus. The solid line denotes alarm cue treatment and the dashed line indicates a controlled treatment, in our case, DI water. With the control, you expect to see no change in activity between um, the pretrial and the post-trial. And with the alarm cue, we expect to see a decreased activity. The decreased activity is some sort of anti-predator behavior. So we'll first talk about the prump poolfish. The prump poolfish evolved in Allopatry in the Mansa Spring. Since then, they have been in single species refuges since the 1970s and have experienced multiple population extirpations due to invasive species. Front pool fish in this graph were shown to not respond to alarm cue. On the x-axis, you can see the pre-cue vertical position, and the y-axis is denoted by the post-cue vertical position. Red indicates alarm cue, and the blue indicates water treatment or control. There was no difference between either of these, so we know that the front pool fish does not respond to alarm cue. So why is that important to us? Front pool fish evolved in allopatry while the Mwapwai River Springfish has evolved um, with the co-occurred with Mwapa days and has also persisted the presence of invasive species. So we wanted to see, would the springfish be the same as the pearl pool fish, its closest relative, and not have an alarm key response? Or would their difference in um, co-occurrence with different species kind of indicate a difference in evolutionary naivety? 
But the springfish, they're co-occurring with Moapodeus, and they've co-persisted co with invasive species. To test this, our setup is as follows. We used a 37 liter aquarium with an air stone and non-transparent dividers on each side. A fish was added 24 hours prior to the trials to allow it time to acclimate. And we were giving it during the trials a treatment of either alarm cue, which is created with one centimeter squared skin from the spring fish and 10 milliliters DI water or 10 milliliters DI water. On the air stone, there's two lines. One line goes to an air pump, which provides aeration to the tank, and the other line runs to the front of the tank where it's secured, and we can use that to administer the treatment with a syringe. We recorded the vertical position of the fish's eye in the tank every 10 seconds for a five minute period before application of the treatment and a five minute period after. And then for total activity, we reviewed camcorder footage from the trials and recorded the total number of times that the fish's eye crossed a line in that five minute period before stimulus and after stimulus. Here you can see with some real life images, there is the airline used for treatment application secured to the front of the tank. And there's the air stone used to disguise the treatment on transparent dividers and the camera used to record the trials. It's important to note that when we administered the treatment, we would crouch down below the shelf so that the fish was not able to see us giving the treatment. This is just to help prevent any... Um, yeah. So interestingly, the springfish did not show a um, response when we looked at total activity. Here on the x-axis is the pre-stimulus total activity, and on the y-axis is the post-stimulus total activity. Denoted in red is alarm cue, and denoted in blue is water. There was not a significant treatment effect between either of these. We did, however, see a change in vertical position when we looked at the springfish. So on the x-axis, you have the pre-stimulus vertical position, and on the y-axis, we have the post-stimulus vertical position. Alarm cue is once again denoted in red, and the water or control treatment is denoted in blue. You can see that as when compared to the control, after giving the springfish the alarm cue treatment, they would change their position in the tank from anywhere from one to three, and they would settle down on the bottom of the tank in that number one bottom water column. White River springfish had a mixed behavioral response. They had a vertical response, but no activity response. Being that the springfish retained an alarm cue response and they did not evolve in isolation, we can say that the retention of alarm cue response means that they are not evolutionarily naive. This is important because species that have retained this behavioral response can recognize and avoid the scent of predators, such as invasive species. Thank you. Is there time for questions, John? Sorry, I'm muted. There is plenty of time for questions. Okay, this is uh, Stuart Reed. That was a, a really interesting talk. And uh, I'm wondering when I watch uh, dace in, in particular, but dace and juvenile suckers in the presence of predators, they tend to move into cover. And I noticed that your tanks didn't have cover uh, in them. I wonder what the response there would be. Um, so I know in previous experiments in our lab, they did provide a cover. Um, I know, so the grad student that I worked under did not include cover. And then we kind of followed that trend throughout since we were comparing with the prone pool fish. I think they did like a maybe half and half had cover in their trials. Not sure, but yeah, I could have a different response, I guess, if they had a cover to hide behind. They would typically hide in the front um, front of the tank below that little blue or black edge of the tank, the plastic, uh -huh. or sometimes they would hide behind the bubbler. So that could have a change in the response, I guess, if they had some cover. Interesting. And if I might add, you also mentioned um, predator smell. 
you in your summary you said predators smell rather than uh, tissue extract. And I wonder if if you tested like a largemouth bass water versus you know actual shrek stuff that was preyed. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, that would be very interesting. We haven't uh, haven't done that with the springfish yet, but that would be pretty cool. Interesting project. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, super interesting, Bridger. Thank you very much. And any more questions for Bridger? Okay. Well, thanks again. Really appreciate the presentation.